Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Speedway Signature Event, checking in with an awesome team here, 21417A Robocause, uh, who has had a phenomenal season so far, Excellence Award already, and a win under the belts. Congratulations on that so far. Of course, last year as well, too, coming in with the Excellence Award of Championships. Local team here out of Indy who's making really big waves. you got to look at their robot, what they have to offer. We're talking about some cool iterations they've been doing, really like their catapult system. You're talking about their blocker and so much more, especially with their drive chain. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Duncan, let's start off talking about the dry base on your robot here. I'd love to hear about your uh, config, what you're doing for that, and let's cover something about your wings too. Okay, yeah, so uh, our dry base, it's a 600 RPM, uh, six motor drive. Uh, we found that that was a pretty good uh, match of both speed and torque. And as you can see, we have the eight wheels, the double traction wheels, just to keep from getting pushed. Uh, so far, it's been a pretty good configuration. We haven't had any issues with it. Uh, and we also got the high strength axles on the drive here. Uh, just to make it really compact and really uh, strong and, and the least amount of space. And we got the battery so it can't fall out. We've, we've lost a couple rounds in the past because of batteries, so you can never be too careful. I mean, that's that's pretty much all there is about the drive. It, I, I really like well. the packaging of it, by the way. Uh, when, when you're looking at designing it, uh, how did you come up with this design for the packaging of your robot? Yeah, so we actually, this is our second iteration of robot. We, we originally had a four motor drive with a PTO that could switch to seven motor drive and then that didn't work too hot because it got overheated really quick so we switched to this this is basically our same drive from worlds last sure. year so we were familiar with it and uh, it just it just worked out that it would work for this year for barrier crossing and uh, we, we just wanted a really fast bot and something we were familiar with so that's what we stuck with that's, that's mainly how we reached that design yeah for sure talk to me more about your wings on your bot yeah so the wings so we did, this is also our second iteration of wings. So they're not locking because uh, we, didn't, we didn't really have a lot of room to work with. But one interesting thing about them is that they're angled to push the tri balls over the barrier, which uh, helps a lot in defense and also in skills. And the way we've tilted them, they have these spacers behind them that are cut off so they don't hit the wheel. And basically they're able to pivot one way so we can use them to de-score from the match those zones. And then the uh, other direction, they stay pretty solid. We're able to push them into the goal. We haven't had any issues with pushing them over the barrier. Uh, again, not locking, but we've had enough force with the cylinders to keep them open. And then you'll see that they're also high strength shafts drilled out just for some extra strength. We, we did start the year with L channel, but that bent instantly. So that's where we are now. Uh, Let's keep moving on your robot and talk about your uh, intake and your catapult. Collins can be talking more about that. Uh, you, got, you got a pretty beefy intake that you have uh, here as well, so I'd love to hear about that. And your catapult's been looking great so far. So starting off with our intake, so we just started to decide to do a simple two-bar intake that can flex up. The shield rides on top of it, but so it can just flex up over the goal and just push the tri balls in. And then we have these latex tubing strips down here that can just get the tribal up a little bit sooner. So it gives us more control over tribal. And then these tanks back here, they just give us the pushing force to get the final push into the goal. So, and then going up, we have this non-slip here. So generally the tribal sits about here in the intake and it can just go back, be reversed back out for scoring. But then we can also, moving on to our catapult. So our catapult, it can go down and it sits about right where it needs to be loaded. Since we don't usually want it to go directly into the catapult, we have this bar on the shield which keeps it from going in unless the shield's up. Sure. But moving a little bit back, so we have a one motor 11 watt catapult. It's a 25 RPM catapult. It gets about 100 shots per minute, which is a pretty good speed for skills. And so, yeah. And we have this piece drip of latex tubing right here to give it a higher arc so it can shoot over a lot of blockers at half court. And then we have this platform back here. So this tri ball will sit like here 
And this just gives it a lower angle to get it right in front of the goal for skills. And yeah. When you're doing your loads on there, is everything a manual process? Like, are you clicking each time? Is it timed? Do you have sensors? What goes into that? So our programmer just has programmed it so that when Duncan presses the button, it just fires continuously. And we have to load it as fast as we can. Sure. So it's, there's no sensors that are there to tell us when it's there. So. It's been obviously working out quite well so far for you, so keep oh, yeah. up the great work on that. Let's start to wrap up on this robot, talk about the uh, shield uh, that you have in your robot, Liam, and of course I want to hear a little bit more about your endgame too. Okay, so our uh, we have a four-cylinder uh, endgame shield system. Uh, so going for our shield first, the shield uh, reaches about 27 inches in the air, which uh, can easily block uh, the tri-balls from most other robots, and it's rigid. You can see we used uh, standoffs for almost everything instead of non slip material and that just keeps it rigid make sure the tri balls uh, fall back down and that just blocks most uh, catapults and things like that when you get to uh, those giraffe bots that stretch way up on uh, four bars it's a bit harder with that uh, it doesn't block those as often uh, but I mean we can drive to uh, center field and uh, block them from there but uh, so the end game works so there's these four so four cylinders, two on each side, pulling down. And so we just, uh, these barely ride up on the side of the bar, so we push into the bar, these go over, and then we go down, and it's a pretty solid B-tier hang uh, for us. So that's just how that all works. And we, have, we haven't had much problems with that when we actually are lined up for hanging. Uh, once it's set for hanging, it hangs pretty uh, evenly and quickly. And uh, we haven't had any problems with the shield so far. So, When you're looking at the, the evolution of this game, the way the meta is going for it, are you looking at doing anything else from your uh, hanging structure, or are you satisfied with your B-tier hang and, and just really relying on treble? Well, so we're definitely going to aim for a C-tier hang uh, by our next rebuild. Our next rebuild, we're, def uh, we're definitely going to aim for a C-tier hang. We're thinking maybe something like a giraffe bot uh, with a shooter up high so the catapult is not in the way of the hang, because uh, that would... Uh, just allow us to uh, hang all the way up to here, uh, to the wheel, to the wheelbase, and that would just allow us to uh, get that extra little extra distance uh, to get to seat here. Originally on this robot, we had uh, a winch system, and that was about it got a quarter inch from seat here. It was really close to seat here. The only thing in the way was the catapult. Sure, uh, that was in the way of the seat here, and also it was slow, so we decided to. Uh, flip to uh, these before our first tournament. So that's kind of a brief evolution artist game analysis of the hang. Well, we can't wait to see, of course, how you do here at the Speedway event. Uh, good luck the rest of the way. Congratulations on a great season. 21417A, Robocause looking phenomenal here. And can't wait to see how they do here at Indy Speedway. Good luck the rest of the way, guys. Yes, thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.